and we'll do the EPA in March 1st. The implementation rates, uh, the timing of this, quite frankly, is terrible. Um, this is a two year planning program with the primary, uh, I'm sorry, the priority uh, action plan due on March 1st, and the comprehensive climate action plan not due until. Uh, our friends uh, in Congress have recently achieved the PA, achieved the no fell uh, for competitive funding on September 20th. Before the planning is actually. Yes. So, um, you'll notice that the applications for this competitive funding are due to the post, one month after the primary and so on. Priority plan action plan is due. So um, we have to. We have a big task in front of us. We're communicating with all, any, and all of the participants in this meeting because in order for them to be all this funding through their application, they have to coordinate through us in our program programs policy have to be. Able to a priority option. So, like I said, <clears throat> we're going to be needing uh, to coordinate. Currently, have a, a one page summary of the, the NOFO uh, in words, which we're looking for is probably later this week or early next week. Uh, we're going to be holding workshops with potential sponsors. Probably in early January uh, to, to check that box of coordination and to be able to get um, all of the input and the participation that we need in the process so these entities are able to go out the event. Set you right up there. <laughs> so, uh, eligible applicants, states, local governments, uh, local air pollution control agencies, such as the Alabama County Health Department, uh, regional planning commissions, or any type of coalition. Of, of uh, we, as SPC ourselves, do not plan on flying for us. Uh, we are basically going to act as, because you see here in the, in the Slides. Um, we just want to act as, as kind of the clearinghouse of the planning process and have everybody participate through us. We are available to provide any type of assistance, technical assistance, uh, or any of the climate uh, projection or anything like that that's going to go into the planning process. We're actually going to be, as soon as we get our consultant on board, before we get our consultant on board, Contract negotiation for the products because I that March 1st government have a draft plan earlier, so we'll share it and just so they can use that. The timing is, is not ideal whatsoever, but um, which is why you would put this $4.3 billion to make meaningful uh, improvements to. Submissions, reductions, without even having the confidence that action is putting the proper things. So basically, uh, applications can come from the following sectors uh, ventilation, transportation, uh, industry, residential, commercial, waste, and materials, and then agriculture. Do you do the climate reduction initiatives or expansions? I'm Um, funds uh, funds are going to be awarded on five tiers, and applications will be valued. Mm -hmm. 
So projects in tier E are not going to complete projects in tier A. Um, I will say that we've been in conversations with the state and the State Department of Environmental Protection. Their intention, as of now, is five for uh, a five hundred million dollars statewide to invest in the deforestation. State the state can the state can apply for the five hundred million dollars for investing in deforestation. So basically, we understand that what they're doing is, you know, like I just said, potential sponsors are required to. For instance, for the investors, we're verifying for a cuts out that, essentially cuts out that individual stuff. So they will apply for $500 million for investment in the carbon production and then run a competitive processing process on their own for the city. What that does for us is that allows us to also, you know, focus more on the other sectors um, and not really have to, you know, really have to invest in these different state of that. Without being more like local government rates, that's transportation. Um, as you can see on the screen. EPA only anticipates a warning between 30 and 100 So this is going to be very, very Very confusing. $4.3 And then this is just a basically a summary of how these projects are going to be scored. There's a some criteria that you use to look at. Um, but as you can see, it's it's um from impact of reduction measures to workforce and job quality, uh the equity piece and the role in the expenditure of funds. The big one is the big one has to be in the big programs. So, again, this is we're at the very beginning of this expedited process. All of our, we also can do the regional organizations, we're all kind of in the same. So we will continue to keep your opinions here again all being kind of a one page summary with instructions on how to coordinate with us. I will really be sharing it far and wide and we really appreciate um you all the help of that. Again, you know, we're looking to build at least one uh, project sponsor to reach out, probably in the main way or in the main way. So, we're going to talk about this. I'm sure that we have to do Do I have any questions? Ron, um, Ron and the update on the United Plains. I have a question. Yeah, this is So, that's the work program. So, I've heard things that I've learned about being a So, we are currently drafting 
uh, a work plan to cover a one year contract between us and the students from the year to July 2024 to June 2025. Um, this is an overview of a one year contract focused to accessible, which is focused on accessible and which, uh, you know, for our initiatives and things. We're doing right now that point to the sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-s
And yes, we want to be able to the smoke devices that are out there. Although, it's easy to do it. So we need to do it. We need to do it. We need you know, always look at upgrading all the modern software. All the main modern, virtual modern performance metrics. All the continuous tracking, the self quarterly required performance, and of course, many of the census data. Very important. The basic initiatives and requirements are actually new. So, um, the fact that we were having these conversations, it was mind blowing. So, 
Um, they're not used to seeing that type of activity that quick, so I, I can't thank all of you things enough for that. But um, all of these meetings we did in this event will happen on Friday. Um, we're keeping your people attended at best time for the call, but a lot of you in the room, so it's great to see everybody. The event is kicked off by Governor Sushiro, uh, the Secretary of Energy, the Federal Co Chair for ARC, you know, the Environmental Computer Center, Senator Casey, the panel events. Quite a few people were able to just learn. With the resources are, the whole goal of this is letting people know what resources are out there, how can they help with going on SKC? I have a pleasure of presenting briefly on a panel to talk about how we can help, how we can um, But I really just wanted to give everybody the update. There will be more to come on this, but um, they really just make the region as a whole and SKC to bring everybody to this. So, um, to kind of close the event. Um, you can find the entire event if you need. And um, any questions? I that I do a bit of I'm very happy with what we do. So, you know, there's a lot of So, Yeah, I have, I have a question. Do you have any idea what direction they're going from this? You know, I mean, it was all, in my opinion, kind of a raw, raw, this is what we're doing, da, da, da. But in Green County, and if I listen, I was at Holy Energy County, and more than anybody else. And, and how's this going to affect us? And I just don't, you know, if I don't want lip service, I want something done. Absolutely. And so that was some of the feedback that was presented in the one of the issues of um, capacity. We have a lot of smaller entities that can't go out for funding, they don't feel they're competitive for funding. So, what they were truly trying to do was do with that and ugly. What you're going to see is additional conversations. Um, again, they they raved about what a phenomenal job the county has done in explaining what's going to happen. Gary brought out a spreadsheet. Oh, well, he did. He did an unbelievable job. He talked about the company. It was so good. And they were so impressed. They know what all of them are. They're trying to figure out and take the temperature of the region to see what's true and need it. So they can crack the code. This is so important. I don't even need to give them feedback because they're listening. Really listening. Really trying to figure out how they can help. And I think um, right now, heard. My goal is to stay on this because, again, that's my biggest fear. Is I don't want to have somebody feel like their goal is to earn or that. No, no, I have to go see. But I so I was out. So I, I can wait till I get there. The day I'm meeting in this way early. Like, uh, I had a lot. Whoever that is. You got to know who that is now. <laughs> Identify that guy. Well, you're saying. <laughs> you know, we're going. <laughs> Part of my concern. <laughs> Funding's going yeah. and stuff. And, uh, you know, our senators and reps and, and everybody, um, and we're really familiar with it because we talk to, to West Virginia on a regular basis. And um, at the end of the day, Pennsylvania doesn't have near the cloud that West Virginia has with Justice and Mansion. They get something, if they ask for something, they get it. And we're right next door. And, and again, I set up one of the questions on the, the panel on Monday, didn't read it all, because I said, when is this gonna stop being political? And when can we you know, expect you know, results without being political when a, a mansion and a justice can over, override what we do? I will tell you what I'm, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> where I can say that the, the why it's starting to change. I mean, you can look at ARC. So you figure this was the first time in the history of the whole program that Pennsylvania beat out all states, including West Virginia. And so that's something for us that we're very, very proud of. That means, you know, I think there were, I have my notes here, 48, uh, 48 applications submitted for Pennsylvania. And I think we had um, 19 come through. So that's, that's major, especially when you consider that's probably close to half of the month went to Pennsylvania. So that's a testament that they're listening, that we have great projects, that we have that 
But I, I do agree with you in terms of, you know, kind of what the next steps are going to be. I think they were kind of looking at all of the conversations we had here locally. What happened on Friday, the fact that so many people showed up and so many people missed. There's a true presence and want for change here in Western Pennsylvania. And I think the fact that there were so many people that showed up that they they have to listen. Because, again, it, it brought in a lot of people, national news, local news, all the above. So um, I believe I have a follow-up call uh, next week on this. And I'll, I'll have an update for you probably sooner than later to find out kind of what's next. But I do know they're taking all the notes. I've seen um, all of the federal agencies send their notes to one person that they took from the falls. So they, they listened. I've, I've seen them. So it, the good news is, is they were. Okay. What's the scheme what's going on? So there's me. What what did you all capture with the team? Besides So so a couple things. One, um dollars dollars still exist, you know, so people what they want folks to know is these dollars are still out there, right? Um and I would say it's somewhat of a mismatched communication, meaning that dollars are still out there, but your your applicants are saying, I don't know how to access. And even if I can access them, I don't think I have the staff to access them. So one of the things that is truly, you know, for example, if you have a small municipality that wants to go after funds, they don't have the time, energy, or staff to write that grant. Or you might have a smaller um, entity, agency, whatever it's going to be, that can afford a grant writer. And so the person that's on staff is going to do this. They, you know, so like little things like that. So one of the things that I've seen come out of the last year is everybody's trying to help with capacity. I think they're trying to help with the, the grant consultant thing. One of the things that DCD that was brilliant, they did, was they, um, this year for ARC-related grants, they were able to assign a grant consultant. So all the stuff that Faith and I do working with those, they were able to hire somebody to truly get assigned to each and every grant, handhold them through the process, read the paragraphs, talk to them. And and some and we've heard kind of across the, the gamut of this was so unbelievably helpful, and it's not already spent the money on a grant right around so it, it truly was, um, they, they did a great thing knowing that it, it couldn't be one size fits all. But uh, capacity is still a huge challenge. Where do I even start? Um, you know, I heard about this announcement. I have two weeks to apply for it if I can't get to it. Um, the other thing is the costs of everything have increased. And so that's been a huge issue for construction related projects. They're going 30, 40% up. Um, so what they're trying to figure out is, Okay, so we have all these challenges. What type of program can we put into place? One of the other issues that I brought up was match. Match is a huge challenge, especially for, you know, again, if you're a, a smaller um, county, municipality, et cetera, coming up with a million dollars in match is not always easy for people. So these are some things that um, ARC has between a 50 and 70% match rate. You know, um, Fayette County has 30%, but that's still a lot of money. So, um, and even on the most of the federal side, it's a 20% match. So where's, where's, where are those dollars coming from? Things like that. So they're trying to figure out what can they put into place. But I would truly treat the last 30 days of the listening session so that they could hear. I mean, they heard from your economic development organization, some of your um, some of the nonprofits, workforce. They heard from municipalities, pros and cons, but also the real challenge. But capacity probably was the top along with match of the two biggest issues they had. Let's go back to the Monday meeting for a second. I'm not trying to offend anybody here, but I might. But, um, you know, the, the Secretary of the Department of Environmental Protection was there. And I, I went up and talked to him afterwards. He is, and I'm sure a lot of people here are, and uh, extremely green. I mean, he's, he's absolutely. So, but, and I have family, and I, I expect green down the road. But if we don't have coal <laughs> and that energy right now, this time being, I mean, we have to, in time, revert to that. These lights aren't on. And, you know, we're not going to exist without the coal industry. And I don't know that he is so so focused on the green that he's looking, he's got these blinders on and not going to support a county like green, which is all coal and gas. And, and I really, it, it concerned me. And so I, I don't know what direction, but when you have someone head of that department, and it, it was just so obvious, if anybody else was there, they, they heard him. It was just totally, well, I and I understand that. Don't get me wrong. Anybody here that thinks I'm against, that's I'm, what I was asking. I'm against Green. They're totally wrong. 
but I also have common sense and understand <laughs> if we don't have the fuels that we're using now and phase them out, then we don't have the lights and we don't have the power. And that was a common theme across all five meetings, is that everybody said it's not that we're saying we don't want to go green, it's saying we can't just turn something off right. and, and call it a day. So we need to put something in place that's going to be able to... But he was, you know, I was fearful because he was absolutely... Well, I think Larry's name is right. Obviously, Mr. Manchin had a lot of clubs in this process. His wife is the chair of the NRC mission. Um, but I think we in southwestern Pennsylvania have a lot more capacity to be able to deliver these projects more quickly to get this money spent before the end. And I think that's a priority of the administration, too. They don't want this to take long. They want to get this done quickly. So between our manufacturers who can access the hydrogen, the, the, I mean, there's a lot that we have going for us that I think we can access to a lot of these programs that are coming about. And I think that's why they were here. I think that's why the secretary came here, which is a big deal to have the secretary be here, obviously the governor, the senator, et cetera. So I think we put our plans together. We can get a lot of these projects, including, yeah, Green Fayette and, and the ones that, you know, might be left out. Well, and our big concern, I believe, is that we need to be concerned that West Virginia is getting all of the hydrogen hubs. They're going to get a big ammonia plant that's going to be down near um, their major cities. So where they, they're taking our natural resources and they're piping it there. They're building these pipelines underground. We need to say, hey, wait a minute. What is Pennsylvania getting? Particularly, what is Green County getting? We say they can pipe it anywhere. But and leave us nothing. We've seen that with the coal mines, and now we're seeing it with the gas. And now they're moving on to hydrogen. When are we going to say in Pennsylvania, keep it here? This is where you're getting it. Keep it here. Probably the unified voice is so important. And I think it comes down to really a regional voice of here's where we all think this should go. Because I think that's right now, they see the capacity to your point of. They think Southwestern Pennsylvania can, can handle it. They're they're truly feeling like it's easy to do business with right now. That they're they're happy with the regionalism they're seeing. But I think that's a really key point: is that we all probably have to be speaking the same language, saying the same things, because that unified opinion it's going to look like for you know 2.7 million people we all feel this way instead of you know 13 various opinions on the subject. I think that's really key. And I think also going back to the point about Harrisburg, mm -hmm. that same, we all feel this way. We all think this way. This is as a region where we think we should be going. I think that's where your strength lies. And I think the more they see that with, with this region, the more funds you'll see. I think the more business they'll do here. And I think you'll have a, a greater ear to the federal government. Mm -hmm. Just to, <laughs> to add something to that as a perspective. So this morning, um, Jen, Dom, Andy, and I met with the executive director and the executive board of AMPO, which is the basically the National Association of MPOs. And we had people from around the country, and when we described the environment, the working environment here in southwestern Pennsylvania, they were astounded. Over 500 municipalities, you know, kind of disparate voices, and they were saying, how do you bring that all together is, well, we are a convenient. We're, we're a natural, SPC is a natural convenient for these types of conversations. So to your point, that's a very important that we be able to kind of get together and articulate what do we want as a region in order to be able to attract federal funding. Mm -hmm. right. so all of those discussions have to have happen beforehand so that when we go forward for rent, we get it. All right. And I think yeah. right now you have their ear. So I would say probably maybe putting something together officially yes. sooner than later would be a, a growing idea. Yep. Because again, they, they are listening to this region right now. What is this region policy around X, Y, or Z? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that working group meeting that we need to schedule within the next two weeks. <laughs> okay. A great time to at least start on that conversation. And in terms of um, Right now, I mean, what I have been, uh, you're the person who heads up the IWG here here locally. Um, so I think that's also another asset that we could probably have them here at a meeting very easily. So I do think there are some opportunities here um, that, that we can definitely take in the next 30, 60 years. Yeah.
Any other comments or questions on that? Okay, Vince, this is fun. <laughs> well, thank you. And actually, kind of in the spirit that everything is connected, right? So, um, Dom was during his presentation at the UPW, he was talking about some of the electric vehicle work that we want to do. And I still stepped around, you know, us being a convener and how we do that. Well, you know, I'm very happy to report that well, as a little bit of background, let me, let me first uh, level set. As a little bit of background, I think you're all aware of the bipartisan uh, law. Uh, provided for $7.5 billion for EV charging uh, at the local level and for long distance trips. Um, what that means for Pennsylvania specific, specifically, and this is the NEVI program, so it's the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program. What that means specifically for Pennsylvania is that uh, the state will receive uh, $171.5 million in dedicated funding. So that's a very important aspect. Well, that's a very kind of still contentious uh, technology. It's still, I think, a very misunderstood technology. So in order to get ahead of that, uh, PennDOT uh, is teaming with SBC to host um, one of six PennDOT community conversations on EVs. Very important to really kind of demystify the technology. The, the discussions are going to follow topics such as what are the operational models, what do the technologies look like, demystify them, what do the communities feel about that technology. And the first or the meeting that we're going to have here is going to be in this room on November 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, invite everybody to attend. I think it's an important moment to uh, for everybody to understand how PennDOT is thinking about this and how we're working with SDC on this. Um, and uh, Dom had mentioned to me that the, the NEVI state plan of course, Pennsylvania has to put a plan together, is an evolving document, and it's evolving annually. So these conversations are very important to influence what that statewide plan is going to look like. Again, the $171.5 million is not a one-shot deal that's over five years, but it's important that you know, we position ourselves to bring things back right around here and be part of this conversation. So again, November 8th, from 6 to 8 p.m. in this room. I have a question. Yeah. Um, is there a topic in this? Because there are going to be a subject in this that deals with the uh, problems with the electric cars in the sense of they are in an accident and the towing companies and the damage of the car itself that is contaminated and, and they have to deal with it a different way. That also going to be a factor. Because I have a very good friend who's a tower and the insurance industry is buckling down heavily on them. The space around the car being uh, that's being towed has to have a certain area around the car to be stored in. And along with that, just the fact that if it catches on fire, there's no way to put them out. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. And it, it goes back to some of the open questions about what the technology is capable of doing. Um, as you recall, my previous job before this was at FTA, Federal Transit Administration, working on research. Uh, program. I, I ran the research program, and we funded the development of electric buses, which are actually different than electric uh, cars. It, it's a scaled-up version, but there are some differences as well. And one of the primary concerns of transit agencies were, how do we send emergency responders to fight a fire on one of these buses? And that was one of the ongoing pieces of technology or research that we had to conduct. There's a different way of fighting that fire. There's a different way of addressing that, that issue uh, when it arises. So yeah, that's one of the things that we have to close the loop on um, for ourselves. Those how we're going to respond if there are issues that arise from electric vehicle, whether they be transit or like duty vehicles. Keep in mind on those discussions too that uh, probably more than like 99% of the uh, our companies in our counties around us are all in here. And uh, they don't have the funding mechanisms that are actually pushing the, the required equipment to take care of those cars. So that's another topic, just in case you know. Yeah, I, I know back in the day, this is three years out, so I haven't really kind of been on the inside of that. But I know that, uh, for example, uh, USDOT was having conversations with FEMA at the time to try to start figuring out how to address the 
Uh, I don't know where that's gone or how how they've developed any kind of response plans for that, but it was certainly a concern back back then, and I'm sure it's still. But the one blanket alone that covers a car in a, in a pickup truck is over eighteen hundred dollars per use. Mm -hmm. If it's only used one time, then it's garbage. So that kind of information probably needs to make sure it gets to that it the right sources. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna, I, I have something I'd like to say, but uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's here's what uh, here's what I'm gonna say. No. So this um, technically, um, and from a board perspective, this would probably be since his last um, because we don't meet again until December. We would anticipate in the next two or two or three weeks that we would be naming uh, his successor. But that said, um, we just had our little powwow up here, and we would like to um, try to plan something in November for both the kind of send-off as well as a welcome, you know, that might be happening uh, at the same time. So um, I didn't want to let this go by without that opportunity by this and, and you know maybe in collaboration with one of these other things that's happening we'll, we'll, we can talk about that but I think it would be important to to be able to do that sometime in November um we're a little out of kilter here because of our meeting schedules but um we want to make sure that we appropriately um thank and send off and at the same time welcome and so it'll be our Thanksgiving <laughs> this is Jen's cooking turkey I'm just saying <laughs> I'll bring stuff. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> that is okay with all. That sounds like a, a plan for everything. Okay. Right. Anyone else have anything to the bit of the order? Can we mention one quick thing? Go ahead, Ron. Uh, I just wanted to. Um, uh, mentioned that the public meetings, um, thank everybody uh, for um, working with me and organizing the, the public meetings that are coming up. Uh, this is the schedule. Um, and I also have uh, hard copies um, if you would like one up front. Um, and again, um, Indiana kicks off at, uh, the PPP season uh, this Thursday. Um, and then we just keep rolling from there. So, and we wrap up on December the 8th with Armstrong County. So, um, again, uh, I have our copies if you would like one. Thanks, Rhonda. And I, uh, we did in the, in the prior meeting, ask Dawn for a little more explanation on the format of those meetings as well. So then we could talk about what that looks like and the whys and, and the second step. The second half of the process where we have a second round yet of, of PPP meetings as part of the TIP process. So, um, you know, we may want to review that at some point as well. With that said, I guess we we'll take a motion to adjourn and we can. Sure. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, hi. So, um, my name is Adil Janwala. I'm a I'm a leader of the program. Just a small note after this. Uh, if you're interested in, in talking about broadband, it's particularly relevant right now. Yeah, I think uh, an earlier update you probably mentioned it, but the, uh, there's about a billion dollars in something called BEAD, which is based about how to make out the rules on uh, how to be paper on that. I was working at the federal government when we made the rules for that. And so I'm really, I came to Pittsburgh University to help with a lot of county in the region uh, in the area to think about getting the best out of that money and getting the most out of it. If anybody wants to talk more or wants to connect on that, Thank you. I apologize. I should have yeah. noted in the email that was sent out. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second.